Hey there guys, and welcome to Stellaris. This is Kata Haynes speaking to you, and I am very excited to present to you today a game that I've been waiting for for quite some time. This is Stellaris um, by Paradox Interactive. They are the ones who've developed Crusader Kings 2, uh, Europa Universalis, the Hearts of Iron series, and a few other games here and there, one of my favorites being Victoria 2. Uh, they're developers of grand strategy games that basically usually and previous up to this point span timelines historically from periods from the 700s to the renaissance in the 1400s into the early modern period and up into world war ii this broke the mold they set out with the idea of making space exploration cool again making space something mysterious something that was going to invoke the sense of wonder and mystery that they felt a lot of the 4x style games were lacking um, a lot of the 4x style games while very cool and i very much enjoy them focus primarily on the three x's as opposed to the four x's which seems kind of counterintuitive the four x's being to explore expand exploit and exterminate i'm pretty sure i could you know citation needed but essentially they wanted to heavily focus on the exploration aspect of the game and you know i'm being interrupted by one of the like most brilliant orchestral scores i've heard in a game for a long time so i i just really appreciate the musical score they went that went into the design of this game but they really wanted to focus on the exploration aspect, so that's what we're going to see a lot of here is while there is the traditional grand strategy posturing, the wars, the diplomacy, there's also a sense of wonder of the universe in discovering anomalies. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into this because I'm excited to play it. We're going to go straight for a new game. And what you're presented with immediately is, of course, a very loud soundtrack. I apologize. But what you're presented with here is a choice of either going with a preset race and this race is going to basically determine what your starting empire's primary people are going to be um in this case of course they have like humanity uh, a couple of different like united nations well the commonwealth and then a few of the more esoteric races like lizardmen or birdmen or giant spider mollusks Cthulhu face tentacle aliens, fungus, and of course the cute little uh, mammalian races which are quite nice. We're not going to go with any of them, we're going to go create a new empire. And this is where the game is pretty cool starting out your um, starting sort of ethos, your what you're doing in terms of the beginning of the game. And you know, I'm, I, I apologize for this, I, I love this score but I'm going to need to turn this down. Jeez, that's like way too loud. Okay, go back to New Game. Get in there. So what you start out with first off is kind of this set of, oh, we got a bunch of things here, what are we doing? You know, you have Continental World, nuclear missiles are involved here, warp travel, got some nice ships and stuff. That's all going to be representative of your empire from this get-go. These here are your technological choices that you have, the design of your ships, what sort of home worlds you want to go for, but we'll get to that. What we're going to start off first is the species so you can go right into species and you get to pick what their type is mammalian reptilian avian arthropods mollusk and fungoids and from there you kind of get to pick uh what species you want to be represented in a galactic scale um i have the platypuses due to a pre-order bonus i guess i don't really like the way they look they're kind of creepy they don't really have eyes and that kind of spooks me out a bit uh, so, in between these races, I don't think I'm going to play as a mammalian. They're pretty cool, some of them. Like this dude, with his little, little like, anteater face. And then the bat. The bat m mammals are f female, apparently. Apparently female. That's really spooky. Um, Retalians, you got uh, a good selection of dinosaur-looking dudes. Got the, the space turtles, quite, quite popular. This guy who looks like... Um, Again, female, apparently. Uh, this guy looks like something out of Diablo, like a demon. Oh, I got some frog dudes. This guy's kind of cool. It reminds me of the Protoss. 
But you have the avians, a bunch of different types of birds, really cool ones. The space parrots, which are their little helmets. These guys, some of these are actually pretty cool. I don't mind these guys down below here. I didn't even realize that was avian. Arthropods, which are going to be your insects slash like um, vertebrate or um, invertebrate animals. If that's correct, citation needed on anything I say in regards to biology. Oh, this dude's pretty cool. He's a little lizards. I might have to go with that. That reminds me of some sort of a like a Chinese dragon or like a a serpent, a, a mythical serpent. So that could be an interest. Otherwise, we could go with the. <laughs> No, those look. Those remind me of Meyer lyrics from Fallout. Or we could just go with cockroaches because we know they'll always survive. Of course, then you have the molluscoids, which are basically, well, if you ever wanted to have a star-faring like old ones empire, this would be the type of species to go for. And the smug slugs. They don't really fit in the whole galactic terror look, but this guy definitely does. And that thing, that thing, a hundred percent does. That guy's kind of. That guy's alright. These are pretty cool. I kind of like these. This is a, sort of a Bloodborne s aspect to it, uh, very much so. Lovecraftian with the tentacles and the uh, the blues. And of course, lastly but not least, you have the fungoids, which are basically mushroom dudes. That guy's pretty cool. That guy's got a big old fungus head on him. He's wearing a nice little cowl. And of course, you have like um, I can't remember their name, but from Ulysseal. Uh they look a lot like the the mushrooms from Ulysseal and from the forest. That's pretty cool. I like the way he looks. He almost looks like he's wearing robes. But I think we're going to go with these little lizards. These guys look pretty cool. They look kind of shifty, but at the same time, you know, they look like they mean well. So we're going to skip on that. we got to find a name for them and an objective. So, of course, you can... Oh, that's actually Sathids. It's actually not even that bad. You can roll up your own. You can randomize yourself. And, of course, you can adjust their plural and their adjective. So if you want it to appear as, like, this is the Sathan Empire, you could change it to this is the Sathanid Empire or the uh, Sathinian Empire. You can change that. And same thing with the plurals. Like, these might not be... These are Sathid singular, but they're also Sathid plural, right? But, uh, actually, I really like that name. Oh, man. Uh-oh. These are pretty cool, actually. I kind of want to go for almost like a Middle Eastern sort of vibe with these guys. I want to do a desert world in my first playthrough, and I think we might go for a certain ethos, materialist ethos, and maybe collectivist? I'm not sure. We'll discuss the ethos when we get there, though. Let's just find a name, and honestly, I almost want to just go back to the Sathids, uh, which I'm probably never going to find it again now, because I'm clicking... Oh, it was right there. Hold on, we'll just we'll just go manually. So two A, these are the Sath. They are Sathid. Plural, they are. Oh man, we should go like something like something like almost Roman or uh, almost bug like Sath. S okay, wait, I can't even pronounce it, so maybe we shouldn't do that. We're just gonna go Sathid. Sathid is their plural. They are Sathid and Sathid, and their objective adjective is. The Satha, sad than wait, what, what, where did I put the D in there for? The Sathans. So they are the Sathid Empire, or whatever we're gonna do with that. So we'll go next. And of course, so this is um, the names list, which is pretty cool. So they have different names that are based off of different um, old world or new species style name lists. So of course you have here like uh, Gerardo Diaz. Ruano Pan, Alexander Mountbatten, like you have a lot of these very human names here. You know, the Teriso fleet. This, these are all very like um, exploration or like Age of Sail names. And you can pick from different leagues, like Human 1, Human 2, you know, Strike Forth Behemoth. Like these are pretty cool names. Or you can take a list that they give to you that uh, might follow with what your species might be. Because right now we're a arthropod arthropoid so we could take on one of these names which i feel like we would never i would never remember any of these Ooh, these are kind of these are almost like um uh, egyptian roab poto poki okay maybe we let's not do that that just sounds silly um damn yeah also we should give them a ship prefix um so this is like hms or whatever you would have as a prefix, like Her Majesty's ship, His Majesty's ship. 
I feel like we are going to be focused on, like, a sand style, so we should go, like, um, uh, like, Sathid, uh, Dune Crawler. So, SDC. So, the SDC Hulk, Hulk Crab. Hulk Crab Wobble. Let's not go with that. Um, damn, yeah, I don't know what I want to pick for the names here. We could just go with humans. But that does kind of seem weird to have one of these guys named, like, Maximus Habsburg. Um, Yorim Den... These are kind of cool. Oh, these are, like, people... F uh, it's, like, very much so honoring their names. So, like, Virpim Den Vathreg. So, of Vathreg. These aren't that bad uh, names as well. Task Force Utis, Gl Glidar. Yeah, we'll go with these ones. The Mammalian 2 ship set. This is uh, one of the cool things that they merged in. So Paradox, uh, the Paradox Studio, with their different uh, grand strategy games, they have kind of an aspect of economic development and population management through economics in Victoria 2. Crusader Kings 2 is very much focused on the RPG aspects and the family acts aspects, as well as with the backdrop of feudal Europe to play on. Uh, Europe, your Europa Universalis focuses on creating, uh, basically, army units. Creating armies, having large-scale war, a little bit of evangelism in there, a little bit of a uh, Hundred Years' War, but was a simpler, more focus on colonization and capturing territory. And then lastly, of course, you have uh, Hearts of Iron, but Hearts of Iron I don't think was is very well represented in this game, and it's kind of um, its themes, because Hearts of Iron is very much... So production lines and logistics and factories. So I think Stellaris as a game very much so combines the three tenets of Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings 2, and um, Victoria. So here is one of the aspects of Crusader Kings 2 that's present is that you have genetic points that you can give to your apparently female species. And so with these species, you get like certain points they're going to take away and certain points they're going to give. So if you take the slow breeders, you're going to get one point back. But that allows you to take a better point to offset it, like taking extremely adaptable for a reason. So you only get two points, you get two points to start with and you get four trait points. You can only ever have four trait points. So if I want to take non-adaptive, that takes up one of my trait point or picks, but gives me back a trait point if I want to. Let's have a look through these guys. You have some resiliency. Members of the species are uh, physiologically resilient and will fight like enraged brood mothers to defend their world. Garrison health and fortification health. Decadence, restart output without slaves. So they definitely like to feel like they have slaves. Enduring, long lived, venerable, extremely long lived. Conformist, people always seek consensus and are more likely to conform to gathering ethics, which is pretty cool. So you get minus 20% ethics divergence, which means that your populations won't go into any specific direction. They'll stay with your core empire ethos, your core beliefs, and try not to deviate as much from that. But sedentary, the species of the sedentary past and its members are reluctant to migrate away from where they grew up. So this is kind of a good one to take if you want some extra points back. It lowers migration time and raises resettlement cost. So it means that while we have open borders or open migration, our people won't move away from where they are as easily. So we'll have to settle other worlds and fill up other worlds with other species that come in under our empire. So I'm going to take that. Even though maybe it doesn't make much sense for these. Well, we, I don't know. These guys are kind of like little lizards. I feel like they'd be living in little communes together under the sands, like all all hanging out in these little like high bound, uh, mounds. So that's pretty cool. So we have a couple of extra points here. We want to do, I think they would be rapid breeder, breeders, but different society outputs, intelligence. Let's take rapid breeders so that we're going to be breeding at a very rapid rate. Lots of, lots of our little, little cute little lizards slithering about. Now we have two points left and two picks. I feel like they wouldn't be very strong. So we're going to give them the weak trait. And we're going to have a three-pointer left over. And with that three-pointer... Oh, maybe that's a bad idea. We'll take away a week, because there's no real three-pointers here that we can take. 
He might take talented leader skill levels, leader experience gain. Could take strong. Could take communal, make some happier living together, which that makes sense. Rapid breathers, communal, they make like nice little homes. And lastly, we have one more point. We can make them live long. We can give them, we'll give them garrison health and fortification defense, which means we're gonna be, this is gonna be a bit of a weird species. We're gonna be, we're not gonna be wanna moving away from where we are, but we're gonna be breeding like mad. Just filling up the, the home worlds we have. We love being around each other because it's great. We're just a big, big lizard cuddle pile. And we're resilient. We're not going to be moved from where we're going. So we're basically just going to like hang out in one place and stay there forever. So let's go with that. And okay, so our starting ruler can be male or female. It doesn't look like it has much of a difference. But let's go for some matriarchs. Uh, they have a couple of different... Oh, oh. These guys actually don't have any phenotypes, hairstyles, or clothes. Damn. Well, we can change the way they color. We oh, got six variants, which... Ooh. I kind of like that one. That one looks cool. And we'll randomize a name. Verpim Den Idar? Uh, who wants to be our leader first one? Mogrin, Yorgrim, Bendrim, Drim, Drim, Drig. I wonder what um, what's actually the female or male names, because usually they have, like... There's some sort of a etymological connector, like the Den... Or, like, always ending in M's or always ending in N's or whatever that, like, denote male or female names. Or, like, the G's here. But we'll go with... Uh, we'll just randomize Feldrim. Feldrim Den Vathrag. Yeah, that's a pretty cool name. Alright. Okay. So, here's another important aspect of character creation or species creation. Is picking your homeworlds. So, what sort of preference you have for where your species likes to be. So you, there, it's a, a raid in a sort of ring here because if you pick, let's say, a continental world, then that's your preference. But you can still hang out in tropical worlds and you can still kind of hang out in ocean worlds. It's not that bad um, for you. But if you're on a continental world, if you like continental worlds, going to an arid world or a tundra world is going to be pretty difficult for you. So I think that we're going to go for desert worlds. Because if we're on a desert world as a preference, we can use arid worlds and we can use tropical worlds. We're just going to have a hard time anywhere that is cold or anywhere that is really, really wet. Alright, well, yeah, really, really wet. So, continental and oceans aren't going to be too good for us. And then tundra and arctic are like no bueno. So, we're going to start with the desert. Uh, desert world, dry, rocky world with nitrogen, ocean, atmosphere. Precipitation and major bodies of surface water are relatively, re ah, relatively rare. Significant temperature variation between day and night cycles, vegetation is scarce, but even moderate participation can make the desert bloom. And we got to pick a homeworld name for us. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Hattie Saris. I actually don't even mind that name. Let's see. Yeah, let's just go with Hattie Saris, and the star name is Hadorim. And our starting solar system, we can pick something special. Oh, these are the two, sort of, the Commonwealth of Man's, and of course, our system, Earth, with Soul. So we'll do a random system. And now we get to pick what our city looks like a little bit. And I think that we are going to have just the arthropod cities, because it looks kind of, it looks like how we are, how we function. It's very, like, soft curves and um, domes and the like, so that looks pretty sweet. You can also go Mammalian, which looks more traditionally, like, futuristic city. We'll go with this. That looks blends in with the sand pretty well. And now this is your eth uh, ethics. Ethics. Edicts. Ethics? No. It's your ethos. Basically, this is what your people, after a long period of time uniting their home planet and coming together as one unifying government, this is what kind of stuck with them as their core belief system. It also determines what sort of government types you can have. So... It's arrayed in a wheel, just like anything else. If you want to pick, let's say, something like Xenophile, where you you love other uh, aliens, right? Then you can't pick Xenophobia, of course. And so you get three points. So I could take three minor ones and be like, okay, we're collectivist, Xenophile, and pacifist. Or I could go, we're fanatically Xenophile and pacifist. So we really like people, we really like other aliens, and we kind of don't like the fight. Or we could go fanatic pacifist, where we don't, we're not fighting at all. But we're a little bit spiritualist too. 
So you can take either three moderates or you can take one extreme and one moderate. And by doing that, it will adjust what sort of government types you have available to you. So as a fanatic xenophile and pacifist, you can hold moral democracy, peaceful bureaucracy, or enlightened monarchy, as well as indirect democracy, plutonic, plutocratic oligarchy, or a despotic empire. So I think we should go with, I don't know if we're going to be wholly spiritual. I kind of like have this idea of them being scavengers, like taking up little bits and like slithering around the sands, finding pieces of the old world. So I think we should go with materialist. And so materialists, we could go fanatic or regular. The regular gives us a pop modifier of physics, engineering, and society uh, output. So for research, if we go for the extreme version, we get twice as much. So 10%. It basically is saying, although it hurts, we must grow up and put aside our outdated notions of morality. There is no divine spark granting special value to a living mind. No object has any intrinsic value apart from what we choose to grant it. Let us embrace the freedom of certitude and achieve maximum efficiency in all things. Basically, we're being a bit of Fedora spiritual orcs, but that means that each one of these little dudes, each one of our Sathids, are very much so aware of how they fit in the world and how you know spirituality doesn't quite affect them as much. So if we're gonna do that, I feel like we should go collectivist as well, which gives us a slavery tolerance and we don't take up as much food. I don't know if we wanna go slavery per se, but the other one is individualist. I feel like we should definitely love the community. So we're going to go fanatic materialist. So we're all about technology. We're all about gathering up little cool bits of uh, items and stuff. And I think we're going to take the regular collectivist. Hmm. We don't want to go pacifist. We'll go collectivist. Society has long since evolved past the insignificant rivalries and current concerns of individuals. We are numerous but one, and the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So we're very much so a community-based lizard population. And that gives us access to a science directorate, despotic hegemony, plut plutocratic oligarchy, or despotic rulership. So the science directorate, you get an election every 40 to 50 years. You get research alternatives plus one and empire leader capacity plus one. This government is a materialist form of oligarchy where a community of scientists supervise the government apparatus for maximum efficiency. You also have a uh, despotic hegemony. This government is a materialist form of autocracy, autocracy, sorry, where citizens are viewed as little more than cogs in the state machinery. Efficiency and technological progress are valued above all things. You get research speed and survey speed. Each ruler can build an elite assault army, which is pretty cool. Uh, or we have the basic old plutocratic oligarchy, which uh, elections every 40 to 50 years. We get energy credits and minerals, and it's basically just rule a ruling by the wealthy elite. A persistence personal wealth translates directly into political power. And lastly, a despotic empire. Uh, each ruler can build an oversized military station. You get lower building costs. Slave material output and slave food output are up, up, up. So you get a lot more from slavery. The government is a relatively pure form of autocratic autocracy. God, I can't say that word. With an absolute ruler that governs the state with an iron gripping appendage. You know, sometimes it might not have a fist. Uh, we have fists though. Well, kind of. We got little little hands. We're going to go with, ooh, this is hard. Science directive or despotic hegemony. I kind of want that elite assault army. But at the same time, research new alternatives. I actually don't know what that means. But empire leader capacity is pretty good. And of course, these um, all of these government types will upgrade once you reach the proper te uh, proper uh, technology and become cooler forms of the government or more um, fleshed out forms of that type of government. So, I think I think we should have a science directorate because it's more of a communal thing. We're more like together supervising the whole of the hive as opposed to just one one prime ruler. So that's good. That's our ethics then. And our empire name, I think we should go with... I was thinking about something in regards to the dunes. So... Uh, uh, what what should we do? It's going to gotta have something, some, a good ring to it. Some, uh, something cool that looks, uh, looks really pop. That has to pop on the galactic map. And I'm thinking the Great Dune. The Great Sathid Dune? Uh, uh, what should it be? 
I think the Great Doom Dune is pretty cool. The Empire Empire of the Dune. Great Dune. Let's do that. What? Oh, what would the what would be the uh, the adjective then? Oh, I don't actually even know how that works. Empire name, the Great Dune. Hmm. Well, I'm not even sure. Let's just we'll, we'll go through cycle through some of the random randomized ones. Let's see here. No, oh, it doesn't actually want to. Hold on. You want to give me a random name? No. No, it actually doesn't. This is all fine, right? Okay. Um, yeah, let's just we'll just go back to the Great Dune. And for this, and it'll just be Great Dune. So it'll be like Great Dune Ship or Great Dune Space Station. All right, and now we're getting into the flag design. Oh man, this is gonna be so bad for me. All right, let's just go with something green, green and orange. And I got, I got some interesting um, icons from the pre-order bonus, or not the pre-order bonus, the um, little clicker game that they had going on. So we might try to find one out of these. These are pretty cool. I like the sun there. That's pretty sweet. Might have to go with the sun. What else we got? Block stuff, human stuff. Ornate, ooh, that's pretty cool. I like that. Something that's indicative of my cute little lizards. Another sort of sun. Got the paradox stuff, some pirate stuff. Yeah, you know what? I think I like that under uh, domination. I like the sun. That sun's pretty cool. And we should go with a, what kind of background? Ooh, that looks like a dune. We'll go with that. And then uh, this is sort of your starting technology tree. So you're not locked with these weapons when you first start out. These are just the ones that you're going to get right off the bat. So you can have projectile weapons, mass drivers that use electromagnetic catapults to accelerate projectiles towards targets at blinding speeds. While somewhat limited in range, their kinetic energy and high rate of fire chew through shields with each. Then you have missile weapons. Space to space weapons armed with nuclear warheads. Missiles have excellent range, but they are vulnerable to interception by point defense systems. And finally, energy weapons. These directed energy weapons emit focused laser beams at their targets. They are effective at medium to close range, largely ignoring the bulk of enemy armor. So you have shield destruction, long range, kind of okay against shield or armor, and then definitely focused against armor. So it'll burn through armor. I'm going to go with missile weapons to start out. Because I think that fits our sort of ethos of firing from a distance and striking unexpectedly from range. So we're going to go with missile weapons. And then lastly, there's the FTL method. And this, the FTL method, is kind of tricky to deal with. So you have warp travel. Warp drive generates a subspace bubble around a ship, making faster light speeds attainable. This allows for free but relatively slow travel between stars, given the great distance involved. So you can go, I want to go from this star system to this star system, and it'll take you there. You might not have the range, though, to reach, so you'll have to get better warp travel, and it's going to be slower. The second type, hyperspace travel. The hyperdrive allows ships to temporarily breach the dimension of hyperspace. Interstellar travel is fast, but limited to existing paths along the hyperlane network. So basically, you're following highways. Hyperlane highways through space that are going to take you really quickly to places, but you might only have a certain amount of lanes that you can take. And then lastly, there's wormhole travel. Wormhole generators tunnel through subspace and establish a conduit between two points, permitting travel across vast distances. The large generators are too big to be fitted on ships, requiring special wormhole stations to operate. So this is more like you have to build a station where you want to go, in a sense. So it's a little bit more complicated in setting down space stations where you need to be, but it is like one of the fastest ways to get around. So you build a wormhole station in your home system, you can launch your ships anywhere in a radius of your home uh, system, but you can't get back unless you put a wormhole station out there, right? So you have to kind of be careful about how you're expanding. So I think you might just go with hyperspace travel, because it's the middle ground. And uh, yeah, I kind of like lanes. And lastly, we have our ships. Oh man, I actually, I really like the arthropod ships. They're very, um, 
I don't even know how to describe that. It just look awesome. A little like Taurus in the center there. Uh, two like hover jets. Yeah, I'm all about that. Cool. So here we are. The Empire of the Great Dune. The Sathid People's Empire. Armed with nuclear missiles and hyperspace travel, we're about to breach into the vast unknown of space and take it by storm, hopefully not being crushed in the process. We are a science-focused directorate. We're for the people, and we believe solely in technological progress and might. We just really love to get our hands on a good piece of scrap, that's all. Uh, we're gonna outbreed everybody, we love family. We don't really like to move around too much, but God help you if you try to move us from where we are. And so that it is, we'll save the species. The Great Dunes saved successfully, and there we are. Click done, and this is our basically launching into the game. I might turn on Iron Man mode. Iron Man mode is going to be pretty hardcore. We're going to be able to get achievements if we do this, so I'm kind of interested. If you're not familiar with Iron Man mode, it's basically... It's only auto-save, I'm pretty sure, or it's only... You can only save with quitting the game, so there's no saves coming involved. If something bad happens, you got to live with it. So we're going to do that. Fuck it, why not? And we're going to go from medium galaxy size, so 600 stars. Uh, the shape of the galaxy will do an elliptical... So that's more of like, it's a pie plate. So unlike how our Milky Way galaxy has a couple, I'm pretty sure it has a couple of arms on it. An elliptical is more like it's not gotten to the point where the arms have begun to separate. So there's no real dead space in between the arms. It's just a big pie plate of stars that are close by. We're going to go on difficulty normal. We're going to do, we're going to have 17 AI empires. Well, let's see. Uh, 17? That's a weird number. Let's go with... So we'll have 15 AI empires in me, so that's 16 players in total. Uh, advanced AI starts. This controls how many of the regular AI empires will start with the initial advantage of resources, technology, and population. They do not gain any additional bonuses besides a stronger starting position. This thing does not affect fallen empires. So this just means that four of them are going to be a bit more of a Billy Badass off the get-go when we finally find them. So I'm okay with that. And yeah, there we go. Let's generate the world.